Hello and welcome to Game Revolutions, the series where I write a retro game for retro hardware using my pitifully retro brain. In a previous episode, I made the car jump, and it took a lot of doing and a lot of bugs, but eventually I got the car to jump. Today, I use real physics and an actual math formula to make the jumping appear more realistic because as every discriminating Moon Patrol clone player knows, realism is paramount. When we last left our intrepid Moon Patrol Explorer, we had added holes and we provided jumping ability. And it works, though it does seem like it stays up in the air a very long time compared to the obstacle that it needs to jump over. Uh, so maybe we can work first on that timing. Uh, maybe you shouldn't be up in the air quite so long. As you may recall, the jumping is controlled by this offset table. So every negative 32 means we need to go up a line, since there are 32 bytes per line, and every positive 32 means we need to go down a line. So I can actually play around with this and decide what the appropriate number of negative 32s and 32s are to get the timing better. This is what I came up with. I'm sparing you the trial and error. But you can see I tried to reduce and then add back and reduce and stuff until I came up with what I think is just the right number of ups and downs. Let's take a look. I think that's a bit more reasonable. We should have at least some challenge here, although I, I do think this is more than we need uh, because I want the game to be fun to play and too challenging means not enough fun. Uh, so, my next step is to make that jumping a bit more realistic. It should be obeying physics and not just be going up each frame and then down each frame. There should be more of a parabolic shape to it. As you may recall from introductory physics, gravity is a force that causes an acceleration on an object. I, I, I think gravity is a force. I mean, we treated it like a force. But is it maybe just a curvature of space-time? I don't know what that means. I, I heard that somewhere. Uh, I don't know if people still think of it as a force anymore. I don't care. Stop asking me questions! An acceleration will affect the displacement of an object from one point to another by a factor proportional to the square of the time. Something like that. Any, it's a square thing. So if this represents the time moving forward, and then this curve represents where I want the car to be, then the curve is some kind of function of the square of the time. And that means quadratic equation. So if I can figure out what my a, b, and c are, then I'll have a function that I can use to figure out what the y displacement needs to be at each point in time. But there's a more convenient way to write this function. Recall that the root of a function is an x input that will result in a zero output. And I can instead write this as a factored function, where I use the two roots that I want as part of the formula, and then I have some other constant here, q, that I would need to figure out. So I'm going to write my function like this. And the cool thing is, I know what my roots need to be. So at time 0 and at time 16, that's when the car is on the ground. It's all those points in between where the car is flying through the moon air. So if 0 and 16 are my roots, I can plug in 0 here, I could plug in 16 here. And now I have this. Now I still need to figure out what Q is, and that's going to depend on how high I want that curve to be. So at the point in the middle, at time 8, that's when we're at our peak, and we want that to be a height of 8. Why a height of 8? 
because I think the height that the car is jumping right now is probably fine. It's just that the path it takes to get there is kind of wonky. But right now, each time unit results in a linear change of the height. So once we get up to here, we're at height 8. And this part I want to keep, it's just all these other points I want to change. So basically, f of 8 needs to be 8. f of 8 needs to be 8. So I can then solve for q. I just plug in 8 for x here, and then I have 8 on this side, and then I have q times 8 times 8 minus 16 on this side, and a little bit of algebra later, and we end up with this. And I now have my function. Now that I have the function, I can plug in values for x that relate to the points where I need to adjust the offset of the car. So basically just f of 0, I know that's just going to be 0, f of 1, f of 2, f of 3, f of 4, f of 5, f of 6, f of 7, f of 8. I don't even need to plug in these values because I know they're going to be symmetric with these. I can just reuse these values for the way down. So I wrote some Java code. I used some constants for things like the jump height, just in case I wanted to change them, and the jump width, and that's those 16 units of time you saw on the x-axis. And the Java code just does the algebra for me, and then in the end, it prints out what my increments need to be. So let's run this. And we get this, and we can just paste that into the code. Now, if you have a sharp eye, you will notice not just one, but two serious issues with this. But if your eye is not sharp, much like mine, then you would have just gone and run it and saw what happened. Oh. 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 No! No! Why you do that? Let's see if I can slide to the right. Oh look, he's all the way up there now. He's a flying car! Oh, neat! I've invented a new game! Yeah. You want to see how high up he can go? Surely nothing bad will happen if he keeps on going up here. Oh, look at that. I think he went from one buffer to the other buffer. Yeah. And... Let's take another look at these numbers. What could possibly be so wrong about them? Well, the numbers are wrong, but that's not the biggest problem. Do, 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 Although these numbers don't get higher than 255, they are out of the range. I'm using signed integers, and if I'm dealing with 8 bits, I only get negative 128 up to 127. What is this, pray tell? That's not a thing I can use. What is this, pray tell? That's not a thing I can use. So we had to do some double byte action. A few changes need to happen so that the code knows that we're dealing with double bytes now. So after we get our current jump offset, we don't just increment it by one, we've got to increment it by two. And to make things work out nicely, we should initialize that offset to be negative two. That way when it's time to begin jumping, we'll end up here, it'll be negative two, we'll add negative two and then add 2, and then we'll be at 0. And when we grab the offset out of the table, we're not grabbing one byte, we're grabbing two bytes. No need to sign extend anymore. And anywhere we were asking about B, we should be asking about D instead. D. And then some of this erasing code got complicated, because I can't use A anymore, I have D with my offset. So a bunch of other stuff had to change too. It's definitely better. We fall all the way down now. That's a good thing. Can you figure out why the erasing got broken? It was erasing just fine, the old style of jumping. 
Perhaps you remember that the way I erase was very much tied to the idea of double buffering and that I would be going up or down one line at a time. But now we might be going up by two lines. We might be going up by three lines or four lines or even more. So now the code has to be changed to deal with the fact that the car could be any number of lines above or below where it used to be and to very carefully erase what needs to be erased. Aha, the erasing is good. But as is usual, it's never just good news. It's always some kind of good news, bad news thing. Does this jumping look right to you? Shouldn't it like get up to the top, kind of slow down and then like start slowly accelerating back down again? It's just, it seems like it's bouncing somehow at the top end. The physics is off. Why? Well, it turns out I had some bugs in the Java code that was figuring out the function and then sampling it, but it was just stupid math errors. And also I decided that increasing the height would allow us to see the jump better. We, it would allow us to see the various stages of it, accelerating, decelerating, and then accelerating back down again, and then poof, back onto the ground. So I actually increased this up to 24. So this was the final version of the code. And when I run this, I get very different offsets. In fact, you can see it kind of slows as it goes to the top. It stays here at zero, meaning no change for a couple frames. So it's kind of like floating in air before it comes back down again. Whoa, bunk. Whoa, bunk. Whoa, bunk. Now that is what a car looks like when it jumps on the moon. This is realism, folks. Let's do a side-by-side -side comparison. Pretty good. Pretty, pretty, pretty good. Next time, we implement a viewer suggestion. Until then, thanks for watching.